to show you how we can build a city with lots of overlapping buildings without even having to use an eraser like ever. In fact, I'm going to use a marker. So what we're going to do is we have to start with the little buildings and then we're going to overlap buildings on top of that. Okay? So I'm just going to start off with rectangles because buildings are rectangles. Sometimes they're tall rectangles, sometimes they're long rectangles. But I'm just going to start off with three smallish rectangles that fill my paper like that. Why don't you go ahead and start off with three smallish rectangles. smallest rectangles. Now I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to show you like the mess up page and the good page. So I'm going to show you what kids sometimes do when they don't know any better. What sometimes kids do when they don't know any better, I need everybody looking up here, looking at the screen, is we say, okay, we're going to build a whole city. I want you to build lots of buildings behind the other buildings. So what they do is they start building more buildings. And then that doesn't look like buildings, does that? It just looks like it's kind of stacked up cake or something. What you wanna do when you stack up buildings behind each other, is I'm gonna do medium sized buildings now. And you start somewhere in the middle of one building. And then you go over. And then you come down in the middle of another building. Then, you do that somewhere else. No, no, don't draw yet. Watch a couple times. Now watch this, because your buildings are gonna get taller and skinnier the further back you go. Now over here, I'm gonna have a building that's gonna be kind of next to and behind. I'm gonna go in the middle and over, and then it's gonna go all the way down to the ground, and that's okay. Now, these front buildings are gonna need doors. And you can have it be one door like that, or you could even do like, um, kind of like a shopping building, like Target or Walmart or school or something like that. Or you could even have two skinny doors like this. And you know what, I'm gonna have a door on this building too, even though it's behind another building, but we still are going to see its door, aren't we? Now we're not going to get too hung up on putting in windows and stuff because we're going to do something else with this town. But that's how you build a building. Now it looks like I have a ton of buildings in here, doesn't it? But when I count, I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can you believe that I only have eight buildings showing? but it seems like I have a ton. So even with just eight, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a nice, even nine buildings showing. So I have three in the foreground, three in the middle ground, and three in the background. And when you think of it that way, it doesn't seem like much. But when you look at this, you're like, oh my gosh, it's a whole city. I'm gonna put a building way, a really skinny building way back in the background. Oh my gosh, it's so far away. Now one thing, let's go back to our bad example here real quick. So let's say you, you do get going and you're kind of going the right way here. One thing that people sometimes do is they then just start going like this. And that's not quite right either, is it? No. Or sometimes what they'll do is they'll, co they'll come up here and then they won't watch where they're going until they'll 
stop too soon. And then it just looks like a giant chimney. So you always want to make sure that when you go over, you always go past that building before you come down. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and build somewhere between eight to ten buildings. No more than ten buildings in our city. Go ahead and build up your city, and then I'm going to show you what our next step is. I'm going to give you about five or so minutes to do this. All right, after we've built the city, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start filling in the windows because James Rizzi had a lot of windows. And we're gonna do that with a uh, yellow oil pastel, but then everything else will be in crowns. So if you wanna add some de extra decorations in some of the big windows in front, you can, that's great, but do it in crown. Um, I'm gonna give you the oil pastels for the windows because it goes really fast to color with oil pastels, uh, but they're kind of sloppy. And you can, create your faces but again your faces are with crayons and the windows are with oil pastels if you want to add about four or five faces into your city like James Rizzi that's great and if you want to have some black windows that's great too again you're gonna do it with crown and all the yellow windows are in oil pastel okay now that we've finished our details with our crowns and our oil pastels. We're gonna start with watercolors. Put two dots of water in each watercolor. And then you can just start painting. And what's cool about this is it will just paint around the uh, windows, but you can also paint on top the windows and then take a tissue and blot it and the window will stay yellow. Let me show you an example here. See how I just paint right over with that orange paint? And, the, paint, and the, the oil pastels are like, get off me, paint, you get off me. Uh, it's called a wax resist because the oil pastel uh, resists the water in the watercolor because oil and water can never mix. And then see, I just took that tissue and I blot up the extra color so it doesn't dry on top. I'm gonna paint around the door because I'm gonna color the doors in different colors. Now the more paint you put on your brush, the more vibrant your paint will be, especially since you're blotting some too. So see how I put lots of purple on my brush there? See how much more bright and vibrant that purple is? Because I let the water soak into the paint a little bit, and then I put a lot of paint on my brush. See how I'm gonna go over the orange with another layer so that I can get another more vibrant color? So you can see how much more vibrant that second coat of orange is. It looks a lot better. And then just finish painting your whole city. Don't worry about painting the sky because we're actually going to cut out the sky and do something else with that. All right, the next step, this is after everything has dried. Now that um, our paints have all dried, we're gonna cut out the city. Uh, and we're just gonna cut off all of the white and keep our city as one whole piece here. One large whole shape just by cutting off the white. All right, then our last step is to um, get two pieces of cardboard. Put a wavy line of glue on the back of the cardboard and glue it onto the back of the city so that it doesn't show. Because remember, James Rizzi had those pop-out pieces. Just like that. Glue it on one side. And it's going to be kind of like a cardboard glue sandwich. So then we're going to put glue on the other side too. Wavy line of glue again. And lay it on top of a blue piece of paper. And that's gonna be our sky. If you have extra time, you can decorate your sky with all kinds of fun and interesting things that would go inside of a sky, like birds and spaceships, moons and suns, stars, all kinds of cool stuff. 
Um, otherwise, this could also be done just like this. So here it is not decorated, and here it is decorated. 